Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the bench. And today we're going to be looking at the Extreme Patriot. Um, I use my Patriot 105, my standard Patriot, uh, quite a lot. Uh, it handles everything well. And uh, if you want to go in for details and stuff, I will change the brush. And um, for all different, whatever I'm, you know, whatever I'm planning to paint. Primers, I might use a whole different brush, but for basic tests and stuff. I use this quite a bit. It can push anything through acrylics, uh, metallics. It, it really does it all. Jack of all trades. It's got three different uh, needle nozzle combinations. I'll tell you what the colors are in a second. But this is an updated version, so to speak, of the Patriot. I guess it's gives you a little more control. It's uh, a smaller needle, I think, comes with this, a .33 or 35. Um, anyway, you can see I have two of them. Because one is sealed, and one will be given away to one lucky viewer. Anyway, they used to come in a nice case. Let me show you some of the cases I used to get. Here is my Sotar. Comes in a nice plastic case. My Chrome. Plastic case. My older 105. This one I just showed you, plastic case. And um, I bought these directly from their retail site. So uh, I don't know, maybe they're, they've changed it up a bit. I don't know, but uh, it's the same thing. It just comes in this cardboard instead of the nice plastic case. Here is the brush. Here's a tool and a bigger, it's like a bigger Mac valve, uh, pack valve, they call it. And that's all, that I, that's all that's in here, I checked it is the paper, this bag, and the brush. So let's get this out of the way. All right. Right away, you're going to see the color. Um, this is an, they call this a blue ice or something like that. I got to read it. It's a, they call it some kind of like blue ice. And it does have that gunning blue to it. Whereas this is a chrome finish. And you notice right away, it's got this in the bottom. It's kind of a finger rest. It's kind of comfortable, actually. Your thumb will hit here instead of holding up here. And this will come across here. Of course, you're going to have the hose down at the bottom. All right. The other difference right away is, I'll call it the trigger, but the pin is much taller. Much taller. And people like this. It gives them more control as far as uh, a lever goes, see it? And uh, it's hard to explain until you guys, even if you like to keep your finger way over it sometimes as I would do, it still gives you a lot of feed feedback. It's really, really unique and um, I actually kind of like it. The standard plastic cap, some people don't like it, but you know what, I have trouble popping off those aluminum ones that, that come with most of the airbrushes. And this actually just pops off really nice and it, it wipes clean. And uh, it usually fits across the board, several of their brushes, yeah. So with this, we have the black. See the black ball at the end of the needle? The black stands for super detail, and it's a .33 millimeter needle. My Patriot here has a blue. Can you see a nice shiny blue color there? That is called their fine. And um, it's a 0.5 millimeter. That's why this thing really pushes everything out very easily. It's got a large needle. And they also have a silver ball. Uh, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm going to order one. When you get the needle, you should get the whole set, the needle and the nozzle combo. They're pretty cheap. I don't even think they're 15 bucks for the needle, the nozzles, everything. And uh, that, however, the silver one is called medium, and that's a 0.7 millimeter. That's a big nozzle. That should push anything through at a low air pressure. Now, the Patriot uh, 105 standards only go by 15 PSI. And um, I'll try both on this brush. But being a smaller needle nozzle, I'm going to say it's going to have to go up to probably a 20. That's my guess. All right, also added with this one is this pack valve. All right, here's the sheet that came with it. Uh, 
kind of giving you the features this is almost like an ad you would see for precision air control PAC that's the dial high roller is what they call the trigger high roller and uh, torpedo needle is a uh, what they mean is it's not protected don't lose this cap this is great for back flushes um, I keep them all by my cleaning area because I love them and you just cap it and you get a back flush beautiful there and uh, you don't want to stab your finger so I keep that handy at all times so this pack valve um, early test proved to me a waste of time that's just me uh, I, I contacted a few fellow hobbyists and they agree with me but uh, what it does is it cuts the air supply off from the needle forward it doesn't really change this pressure at all and all the way against the airbrush is shut down no air is coming out right now and as you counterclockwise turn it it lets the air out you know a couple spins and you got full-blown air is coming out and uh, it falls out really easy it's it's loose uh, it comes with an extra one which is right here as you can see it it's a bigger one is that to the difference I guess it's for bigger hands but I think my hand would end up hitting the bigger one yeah it definitely would it hits this one as it is and uh, personally a feature I'm not crazy about anyway what happens is you just let the air out a little just a little bit and you're gonna barely get some spray through so I'm guessing it's good for spackling and maybe fun to look like if you're doing a diorama you want to spray granite your little white dots it does that it doesn't have that nice fine uh, you know line of paint coming out it's more of a speckling effect and um, uh, I think you can still get the effect doing other methods but it's something I'm not crazy about on the airbrush otherwise it's a comfortable you know well balanced airbrush but this is gonna drive me nuts I think it is but anyway whoever ends up with this airbrush or if ever buys one um, you play with it yourself you might find some uses for it. I think one of the guys I contacted actually does use it they open up a little bit and they do get that speckling effect um, that they're looking for I don't do many dioramas but a lot of guys in my group uh, do trains and whatnot which is a lot of scenery building uh, and anyway that's it it's a point three free flow nozzle um, super detail needle that's what they call it in the pack control oh dark ice finish yep and uh, the back has a parts list so that's pretty nice so that's basically it I just want to see how it performs I mean basically I just do uh, gumpler and I do uh, car kits so um, that's the uses I get out of it uh, I, I feel the need to turn this because this ends up dragging on my finger so all my badges I flip this way uh, except for the chrome or the sotar that's a little longer airbrush but these are let's check the dimensions yeah these are exactly the same it's just little features like the the little grip here the uh, pack valve the high roller trigger uh, the smaller needle so it does have some variations um, it doesn't come with they used to send you the the part that fits here so you can actually uh, attach it to a hose this is made for badger it's a quick release that fits directly on any badger airbrush I got these off of Amazon um, I might give this to whoever wins this airbrush I might throw this in or I might have the one that actually turns it into the standard size without the quick release I think I have one of those let me see yes I have this here too and this also fits on and that fits directly onto your standard airbrush hose right there so yeah I'll throw one of these in whoever wins this so uh, you can use it right away without having to order something else to use it I have a bunch of these too but I have a bunch of badger airbrushes so that's what I use these for and um, that's it I'll show you uh, different paints in it let's put it in my display we'll paint uh, some of my uh, Mecha Empire we'll use uh, what is this anodized green metallic aluminum we'll use that We'll use game air. This should be pre-thinned. We're just going to shake it up quick. 
And uh, we'll try this out of the bottle. I usually like to go to a 0.4 or larger when I spray this Vallejo stuff. Uh, Vallejo. And um, it seems a little thick out of the bottle. The air goes directly in my bigger needles. I, like if I'm using the Patriot 105, the standard, I would pour this right in. Just like my video I showed, it comes right out. But this being a 0.3, I don't know if it's going to work. But we are going to test it straight out of the bottle and see if it can push it out. And then we'll do a lacquer. So we'll do a lacquer, an acrylic, and an enamel. And uh, to start with... We'll use some uh, all clad, <clears throat> excuse me guys, gloss black base. I use this so much that uh, I just put it in this quick uh, bottle and um, I labeled it for my printer and it's ready to go. Just shake it up, put it right in the cup, it's ready to go. So we'll do that just to check out some lines, how close we can get with it. Now, um, this has a protective cap. I put the cap on it right now because I'm bouncing around with it. My uh, Patriot doesn't, and I have another Patriot with the old style that has the protective cap. Now, this can come off. There you go. And now, um, if you want to get really close, you can take that off and get in close. And uh, if you need to clean it, that's what that's for. You can clean it off like that, or what I do sometimes is I keep a brush with uh, thinner on it or whatever I'm using, what water, and I'll clean it off like that at the booth. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice exposed needle like this. So, yeah, you can just get your fingers in there and clean it right off, you know. So, we will try it like that. We'll do it first with the, uh, the black base is what we'll do. And uh, that's all. I've prepped all these <clears throat> on camera before, so there's no need to show you the thinning ratios. It's the thinning thinning ratios. It's 50-50 minimum with... Uh, Mr. Color Lacquers, so we'll do 50-50 thinner with uh, my uh, Air Force thinner. And um, same with the, if you saw my video on my uh, Mecha Empire paints, uh, we'll do about 70-30, 30% thinner. And this we're going to go straight in, and um, if it doesn't work, we'll put some airbrush thinner. I like to keep uh, Vallejo thinner with its own brand, with its own brand of paint. And that's it. This is already pre thin We'll just throw this right in. And um, that's all. I'm not going to show you how to clean it. I've cleaned the million airbrushes on. I show you guys, you know, just plug the end, put whatever's in it. If you're doing uh, the all clad, we'll put some lacquer thinner in there. Back flush it a couple times, dump it out. Another flush through, it's clean. And um, if you're going to have trouble between colors, you think you're going to go light to dark, the great thing on these is you don't have to take the whole back end off. We're going to loosen the nut here. Just grab a hold of this. I think that's why they made it like that. So it just comes out beautifully like that. Now be careful up here. You're gonna this needle actually holds the obviously the high roller trigger in place. So don't pop that out, or what you gotta fish it back in, and that's it. Push it till it stops. Tighten it up. And that's it. I might do that between uh, the uh, to go to the acrylic from a solvent. I might do that, and uh, that's all. And don't forget to clean out the uh, Vallejo. We're going to use uh, hot, hot water, either brewed from your coffee pot or from the faucet. And then uh, I'll shoot through it some of my homemade uh, airbrush cleaner. And that's it. Let's head over to the booth and check out this airbrush. All right, guys, we're at the booth. And uh, sorry, I got the fan going, if you can hear me. I got the microphone close to my face. We're going to go with the all-clad uh, gloss black base to start with. Uh, Finally got uh, some spoons back in stock at my local Walmart. It's been three months. Um, here's to hoping that they work good. I've been having trouble with other spoons. Here's some spoons from my local deli. I asked if I could borrow to see if those are any good too. But anyway, fingers crossed we're going back to the good old spoons. Here we go. Now we're going to leave the pack valve closed and we're going to see what we get. So let's get a piece of paper. You can see how it's speckled out. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. No real difference. I think you're getting close here. Let's see. 
I found it did, really did nothing. I'm going to close it out. I'm, I'm finding no, 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 no real difference. So it's just, it's a feature that drives me nuts. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to ignore the feature. I shouldn't, but I am. But it is a little more comfortable with this, the holder and the, the tall trigger. I do like uh, a smaller needle is quite unique. As far as my badgers go, they're all really big needles except for the solder. Um, all right, it covered good from a distance, just like the paper, but let's try going in close now, which is one of its features. You see what I'm at? I'm at 18 PSI. It does let you get pretty close. It's not as heavy as a spray pattern as uh, my regular 105 Patriot. Let me put that out of the way. All right, that went on pretty good. All right, let's try and get in close here. Let's see what we get. All right. does a nice even line no uh, seems like no separation to it no speckles let's try and get in closer here let's I gotta lower the air pressure guys hold on closer to 15 not too bad This is a brute of an airbrush still. It's not, I don't think it's uh, it's for super details. But you know what? For an all-around airbrush, that, that that's pretty good. Not bad. Let's try and close off this MAC valve and come in close to see if that does something. No, it's spitting. It won't let any paint out at all. So let's uh, turn it a little bit and see what that does. Yep. It's just a feature I don't think is fleshed out. I'd rather just leave it open. And I would, personally, I would glue it open. I would get to where it's normal and glue it up right there and just let it stay there because look at how nice it'll do otherwise you know so you can't put on a big area well, that's the initial test so let's go ahead and try it with different colors let's go ahead with the lacquer We'll go with my enamel and the acrylic. Let me clean this out. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're going back in with my uh, Mecca Empire anodized green metallic number one. This is an enamel. And let's see what we got. First of all, let's try our new spoons and see if they're any good. Oh yeah, this this goes on beautifully. It sprays my enamels really nice. Look at that. Let's try it with some basic plastic. The high roller trigger is actually pretty nice. You get used to it. Look at how even that is. I'll do uh, the other paints on this too. We'll go a couple of lines of them. Look at that. Wow, that's awesome. Put that aside. Let's try it on a Gumpla piece.
Yeah, it covers beautifully. It, it sprays evenly. No, not bad at all. Um, there's nothing on the tip. Obviously, it's an enamel. I'm not really going to get anything on the tip. But uh, so far, so good. Let's try uh, try spraying in close with uh, an enamel. It performs a little better. I guess that that thinner, that uh, that primer, that gloss primer from All Clad is a little tricky to work with. Because look at that. Yeah, no problem at all. You can see how much it's opened. So, and then pulling it all the way back is going to get us that beautiful work right there. Nice coverage. So, you can come in close, particularly with the cap off it. If you're not going to uh, get in close, I recommend leaving the cap on just so you don't damage the needle. But uh, it, it performs really good. No problems at all. Let's check my uh, buddy's spoons from his deli. Let's see if those are working. How great is this? One coat. Look at that. And no primer needed. If you want to keep it bright anyway. Fantastic. All right. Let me wash this out. Let's try another uh, solvent. We'll go with a lacquer. And uh, let's move on. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, Gundam Color. Mr. Color Gundam Color. Uh, number eight. What is this color? Oh, just says MS Purple. Mobile Suit Purple, I guess. Uh, here's the consistency. It's thin 50-50. Don't really need that much. So just spraying a couple of spoons. Let's go ahead and test the new spoons again. It, um, it puts down a nice coat. Let's try it with uh, my new deli spoon. Try and get a little closer this time. Yeah, it goes on nice. I also have a part primer piece from one of my airplanes, so let's try this over the primer. Yeah, it doesn't spray heavy enough that uh, I can get it actually close and not even affect the second piece. It looks like uh, I masked it off. It's, it's you don't even have to worry about it spreading at all. It goes on really nice. Beautiful. I'm gonna check that out at the end. All right, let's try on the plastic. Oh, where's that plastic? This is cardboard. Hold on, guys. There it is. It's a plastic, thin plastic uh, from, I think, Evergreen, I think. blow through the paint as much as uh, the Patriot with the larger needle, that's for sure. All right, we'll let that dry. Let's see how it goes in with uh, a little close with the lacquer. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fine. You could probably do uh, you could probably do appreciating with this. That's for sure. Going into this little crevice here to show you guys how close you can get. So you can kind of pre shade the corner there. See it?
That's it. So, not bad. It, it's good for detail work. Not the finest of details, but if you're going to appreciate a kit, I don't see any problem at all. Let me clean this out. We'll try it with an acrylic, which is always tricky, uh, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, guys, here it is, the mystery. Will it spray game air or model air directly out of the jar? Let's find out. Looks like it's a no. Let me turn up the compressor. So maybe turning the compressor up will help. Let's find out. It's struggling a little. This is a metallic, not thin, out of the bottle. Wow. It's struggling, but it's doing it. Let us try and thin it out now. Just a few drops. I don't know if there's enough in there. Let's find out. Put the cap over the end. Let's bubble it up. Can get this so you guys can see it. There we go. Yeah, we're just going to backwash it like we're doing it when we're cleaning it. Let's see what we get now. All right, let's try again. Oh, a huge difference. So, bigger nozzle is perfect for model air but uh, or game air but this smaller nozzle it had to be thin slightly but the difference is staggering it's a huge difference I also think I should have turned it down a little bit. Because once it was thinned, I believe uh, we could have lowered the air pressure quite a bit. Still comes out really easy. You know, when you get your paint tip dry right there this way you can come in and just like that and continue on painting let's try and do uh, some skinny lines with it seeing that it's an acrylic it's a little different nope this one won't yeah it struggles with the acrylic plus it's a metallic you're not going to get a yeah it is struggling and it's open too. Yeah, a little bit, but it's a little spattery, not as good as the solvent. I'm probably gonna thin it down even further, but any further thinning of this uh, Vallejo paint and uh, it starts to break down too much. But we're trying. I got good control with the trigger. So that is tricky compared to the others, that's for sure. Um, anyway, we'll let these dry, and uh, we'll go back to the bench. Let me clean this out. We'll go over the results and wrap this up. All right, guys, here we are back at the bench, and uh, results time. And they're they're quite good. Um, they couldn't be too far from really good because uh, it's a Badger Patriot, which I use all the time. It just performs great every time. We started off with the uh, gloss black base here from uh all clad no problems there at all 
Then onto the solvents that we did there. My uh, Mecha Empire. And beautiful. Beautiful. Nice and even and glossy. Even the new spoons seem to be uh, my friend's deli spoon. I had to get these. They're much bigger. But these are the Walmart spoons, and they're good. It's almost dry already, and it's only been a half hour. Not bad for an enamel. And then I sprayed this Gumpla piece with it. Try to get the light on this for you. Look at that, how nice. So it does spray little pieces good. I mean, that's as big as a piece as you're going to get on a Gumpla piece, right? Barring a perfect grader, it, 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 sprays, it sprays good. Here is the lacquer from Mr. Color. No need to show both of these. I don't know why I'm grabbing both spoons here. So nice and even. No orange peel whatsoever. No lines. And I wanted to go in for some detailing. I figured I'd show you how, how we can pre-shade with it. And I just got in real close there. And just went around that edge. And now that's perfect for a... You know, if that was black or a dark blue. Perfect for a, a pre-shade. Oh, and this is it over the primer piece. Nice and even. Perfect. Here's one that gave us trouble. I knew it would. Straight out of the jar. A metallic acrylic. Um, 0.3 is a little small. I, I have trouble. As you've seen my video on how to airbrush Vallejo Air lineup of paints. I found you need a 0.4. Or in my case, my Badger Patriot. Or my... Uh, GSI Creos 0.5 millimeter needle and um, but once I got it thin properly which only a few drops of thinner and uh, we got it this is no thinner it's still tacky it's kind of rough looking and this is after I thinned it nice and even it's not tacky so there you go now let's look at uh, the lines now I did paint these uh, this is a flat piece of paper, so it might have absorbed quite a bit, but it did a really good job with the lacquer, all the enamel. Nice, fine line work. You can see the sheen to it. My metallics. And we'll write down the paper with that. This is just cardboard, by the way, guys. Look at how nice and even. So it can get in with the details. I put the cap back on it to protect the needle, which still sticks out a little bit. You're still going to get poked right there. Um, but if you remove that, you can get it nice and close like this. And where is that sheet? There it is. And it's all three colors combined. You can see where I stuck my thumb in it. So that's my uh, my Mecha Empire. This is the Mr. Color, and that's the Vallejo down the middle. So there you go. Uh, it's a nice airbrush. No complaints at all. It's comfortable. I don't like the pack valve. I think it's... Personally, it's a waste, but it doesn't take away from the airbrush anyway. Um, maybe whoever ends up with this thing, you can guys let me know if anybody owns one. Uh, if you guys found a nice way of using it, you know. Uh, you can also adjust the tension. See the tension? It's really easy. You turn this right here, this gold screw, and uh, you turn it, and it'll, you'll feel the tension give either way. So it's pretty nice. You can adjust the tension exactly how you like it. So um, a little more customization that way. But uh, I do like it. But I mean, it's it's basically my my Patriot with a few extra features. I believe if you guys have a Patriot, you can buy this high roller pin right here, and it's not too expensive. It's pretty cheap if you want to just convert yours over to this. Um, but anyway, it's a worthy airbrush. It gets the job done. Obviously, you've seen I can do a wide area, and I can do a small area, and I can pre-shade. So it really does it all, and uh, it paints these smaller pieces really nice. So no complaints at all. I do like it. Um, anyway, if you guys want to win one, I'll send out this one that's brand new and still sealed uh, to the lucky person who gets picked. I'll use an auto picker. What I want you guys to do is comment below and like the video, and um, that's it. I'll pick uh, a winner from that, and... Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already because I have some more stuff coming up. 
let me show you. This is in a nice case. Look at this one with a handle. <laughs> We're going traveling. Let me see if I can pan out here a little bit. There we go. Anyway, this is called the 360. That's its name. It doesn't have a name. It's got a number. Like a Mercedes. All right. Up here, you got a full hose. Look at that. So I guess with this, you don't need... No, there it is. You don't need uh, a special attachment to fit it to another hose because it comes with its own. Now, you'll notice it comes with a spare needle and nozzle. And look at this. It's the silver one. And the silver is the .7. So I wonder if this will fit in the Patriot. I'm going to test it out later on. I do have two of these, too, so... There's that. That's pretty nice. It comes with a spear. I wonder if that's what's in it now. Oh, it is. It comes with a silver right there. Anyway, the, the uh, special thing about this airbrush is top feed. Not the biggest cup in the world, but a top feed, right? Or grab a hold. We spin it down and pop her in. We now have a bottom feed, siphon feed. Check that out. Is that fantastic? Now, this is good because if you want to do a huge amount of priming, fill this baby right up. If you want to switch colors, you know, just switch the jars. You're off and running. So I thought this was kind of unique. It even comes with this giant jar. This will really hold a lot. And, and the fact that it comes with spare nozzles and needles and the hose is really cool. But I have not a clue how this thing's on an airbrush. That's a pretty damn big needle. Let's see what it has for the front. Oh, I don't know how to take her off. Well, we'll do it for the test. But anyway, everything else is kind of the same. It's kind of much fatter here. Anyway, that's coming up. Isn't that unique? I thought that was really, really unique. A siphon and a gravity-fed airbrush all in one. And it comes in this nice case. So that's coming up. That's why I want you guys to subscribe. Hit the notification bar so you know when that one's coming up. And uh, this is going to be tested also. This is not a giveaway. I only got one of these babies. And it's an Iwata Eclipse HPCS. The highly recommended from all my friends is this one. And, um, and this is the one I got. So this is coming up too in a test. And uh, we're pretty excited. And I want to remind you guys to get this stuff. This Fast Orange cleans my hands between... Uh, uh, airbrushing tests and it takes everything off it's fantastic it even works on the solvents too um, but if you, you get your hands dirty with an acrylic boy it comes right off it's orange it's safe uh, it's got a pumice in it and uh, I love it this thing was under 10 bucks I'm over a year now and it's about halfway so I'll put a link below for this this hand cleaner is just wonderful and with prime it even it shipped I think altogether free and uh, overnight so uh, it turned out to be quite the bargain I'll put a link for my my paint shaker too in the bottom and uh, that's it I like the airbrush uh, I'll put a link below where you can buy one in case you don't win one and um, let me know who wins it and I want to know what you guys think of it too so uh, that's the test I hope you enjoyed it please again subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bar and uh, like the video leave a comment I will pick a winner with an auto picker in about a week and uh, but we'll see you very soon as I got a lot more stuff to test here. The stuff is just piling in. And uh, anyway, guys, we will see you in the next video.